Okay, so I want to talk about when remark arrivals and what we're aiming for. And we're going to do that by talking about what we do not want to do, <laughs> which is sail in that um, overstood zone. And I called it like it's to me, I visualize it as like a, the boats like fan out on ley lines, you know, and they stack up on each other's windward hips. Uh, as you can see, everyone wants a little bit of clean air, so they go a little further and a little further over and a little further over and a little further. And if, when we look at our track races from um, like 20 knots of breeze, people are overstanding by like five, eight boat lengths. And then you double that, and then that's the extra distance that they sailed. So they've exhaled 10 extra boat lengths trying to get clear air on ley line. Like I think actually tacking directly behind someone would have been better um, because you go a little bit slower and you sail, you know, instead of sailing uh, 10 extra boat lengths. But even in lighter, it happens. So you can see in this picture, everyone tacks like on the hip, on the hip, on the hip. Then you start fanning. Um, and so in order to avoid getting on that ley line too soon, um, this diagram says like six to 10 lengths, but I think it's really just relative to how big your course is. And we talk about it in percentages. So anywhere in that 20 to 10% under ley line, but it, all that really matters is that you've got clear air on starboard going up the race course. Yeah. So, that distance might change depending on the boat speed and the boats we're sailing. Um, but, but all we want is a lane of clear air that's not on the ley line too soon. Okay, so ley line game. <laughs> that's it. That's what we call the ley line game. <laughs> okay, this is a track race from one of our worlds. And Paris and Anna are winning the race. They're doing really well. They've got a nice strong cover. They'll continue winning it. But I want you guys to watch Italy and GBR. So Italy's the red boat and GBR is the green one. And right now the rankings in the rankings, we've got GBR in fifth and Italy in sixth. They're both on Star Wars Tech coming over in that like sweet spot that we talk about, but like 80 to 90% under the course, you know, under that starboard ley line on the course. Um, they've done this undercut thing, but here's the moment I want you guys to look at. So Italy has just tacked. Uh, sorry. So Italy's just tacked and I would argue they're not in a very controlling position on the boats around them, right? They've just maybe put one boat that's directly behind them in bad air, but these boats have kind of leverage on them. The, this boat is going to be able to decide what they want to do. And so Italy goes over the here and is in sort of a precarious position because now these boats are on starboard. She's got to avoid them. She's losing distance on these boats that were quite close to her. And I just want to contrast her position with where GBR just tacked. GBR is strong on that boat, strong on that boat. Okay, so now Italy is overlay line, which we talked about is terrible, right? They're overlay line and all, this whole packet's underneath them. She's had to go overlay line because she had starboard boats. And so it's nice. in order to avoid them, she had to, you know, sail a little bit extra distance, tack over. Whereas GBR maintained control of the boat that was to lure of her, tacked in. And then by the time they get to the top mark, GBR is in the same spot that she was before-ish, six or seven. And um, Italy is in 10th, but about to lose some more boats even and they're all going slow and high and trying to pinch and get around that mark that's an awesome video yeah and check it out Paris and Anna are winning by a lot they sailed really well that race yeah okay so and I want to talk a little bit about um corner plays and basically that's like when you are in a pack and you're approaching a corner of a race course so there are a lot of opportunities to make you know, make or lose points in corners, especially upwind, I think. And on that first beat, when the racing's usually really tight and everyone's close at the top mark, like this is a pretty critical decision. And so we've always talked about it like relative to the port ley line. And Tim Wadlow actually gave a US sailing, a webinar to the US sailing team recently. And he came up with this colored lane scenario that we really liked. So this is a, a poor recreation, sorry, Tim, but, um, this is his basic concept, and we just really like the way he uh, described it. And so the different colors represent like the different lane options out. And, the, and what we're talking about is like you get into the left corner, and now we're thinking about a, an exit option. You know, we've already decided to go left. We're already on that side of the course. We're not, we haven't led back all the packs to the middle. <laughs> you know, we've successfully gotten to a side. And now we're talking like what's our last tack into the, the windward mark. Um, and so there are two parts to this plan like number one why i want to go over like which lanes are best and why we think that and then number two like understanding which lanes you actually can realistically achieve and that kind of all goes back to our ladder run conversation from earlier but let's start with the colors so number two is the best for a few reasons um 
and I'm sorry, number two. Sorry, green. <laughs> green, <laughs> not number two, green. Right, green lane is the best. And okay, a few reasons for that. When you tack on to port in that green lane, you want to think about your distance to the windward mark then when you make your final tack on to starboard. And so this final tack on to starboard, if you tack in the zone, there's always a little bit of risk involved, right? Um, because you might have boats coming in on, uh, yeah, and, and you're, you're tacking in the zone, boats are coming in on starboard. So it's a safer bet to tack like four boat lengths out instead of at the mark exactly. Um, and that's that we'll talk about ley lines later, but um, that's just like a little thing to remember that port ley, port ley line, unless you're in like first, second or third, port ley lines, there's a little risk associated with that because then you're tacking in the zone to the winner of mark. So it's always safer to go port ley line minus four. And if you go minus four, then you have a full tack speed build and now we're at the zone, which is three bolt lengths to the mark. Happy days, very safe. You also have some decision times. And if you've got spinnakers on your boat, gives your crew a chance to get the controls off, get spin sheet set, whatever it might be. A tack set is always terrible. Like no matter how many times we practice it, tack sets are never good. They're always bad. So skippers remember that. That's the law. Oh, you agree, right, Steph? Okay. Done. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Tack sets are very hard to execute. Okay. So that's why the best lane is not necessarily on that port lane line. There will be days, especially if you're really far out, that maybe the best lane is port lane line if you can nail it from a far distance, but that's harder to do. So anyhow, we think most of the time the best lane is just under port lane line. Um, and one other advantage is that if boats are ahead of you and they're setting, then you're not gonna have to sail extra distance to avoid them. And you're not gonna sail directly under their spinnakers, which is always hairy. Like you don't always know who can see you and what they're gonna do with their course. and where they're heading and so yeah okay so, so for several reasons that's our best lane so that's what we call the best one that's like a comfortable lane just tacking outside the zone happy days okay so then the next best are the yellows next best one and two the reason the only different the only thing we think is really different about those two is that if you tack at the next best one say a shift happens whatever someone else gets ahead of you and they tack on you you know so you tacked on a port you're approaching the mark someone tacks on you Okay, we're not going to sit in someone, say it's a tight cover, we're not going to sit in someone's bad air. If they want to, if you want to tack out and clean your air, at, you know, if you're on that first yellow line, no problem. You tack out, you sail three lengths, tack back. Ideally, you've got clean air on that port lay line, not a major, right? We did an extra tack, we, we did two extra tacks, but we were not in bad air. Okay, the reason the second yellow line is next best, number two, is because someone does tack on you, you don't have that option to tack and sail a few lengths and get to lay line and tack again. Now our, our bailout option is to sail over lay line, which is disastrous in so many <laughs> ways. It's absolutely disastrous. If you could see our true sail VMG when we overstand lay lines, it's like negative VMG to the mark. It's terrible. <laughs> you're sailing extra distance. You're gonna have to weave through setting boats. You're gonna be like reaching into the mark when other boats are tacking. It's a very confusing situation, so don't do it, okay? We don't want to be up there. We would rather be, probably rather be in bad air on the next bests than way over ley line in the mistake area. Okay, cool. Um, I want to talk about corner plays from the right and then maybe that'd be a good time to stop and see if there are any questions about this stuff. That's good. So similar color scheme, I know that's pretty exciting. Um, but the reason the green best and best are offset like that is because the first green lane is further down the course. So I know this diagram is hard to see kind of where the where we are, but imagine that first best one on the left. Can you see my cursor like that? Steph? Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this best is uh, say we're like one third to two thirds of the way up the beat, you know, so we're in like the middle part of the beat. Okay, and we're trying to call a line from a distance. This is the best. This would be like you have 20% left to sail on port, and instead of sailing that out and trying to wing a ley line from all the way at the bottom of the race course, which you can never do properly, unless you're stuff robo, then we're gonna go at like 80%. And then then we're gonna have a chance to make it a little better later. So that's what we think is the best, is like that 80%. If you got all of that you wanted to get out of the right and you can tack whenever you want, that like 80% is usually a sweet spot. 80, 85%, whatever it might be. Okay, next best one and two are uh, the yellows. It's the same, same thought here, where if you go in this like 90% range and someone does tack on you, your bail option is pretty okay. You still can like go to lay line, tack back in. Here's the next best two. If you get out to this lay line too soon, you are gonna get tacked on. You probably didn't call a good one. Okay, so then we're gonna have to either sail extra distance or deal with bad air. So those are both next, not great ones. 
And this best at the top is obviously laying na nailing ley line close to the mark in that top third. And we don't need to touch on the red mistake, right? We don't do that, never. Okay, cool. So let's just pause for a sec. Oh no, why don't you talk about blockers and then we'll pause. Yeah, so I think um, one really important move for executing that play from the right is um, using a blocker. Um, and you can actually do it on both exits, um, but it's a little bit easier when you're coming back on starboard. Um, and so if you, let's say you're going out to the right-hand side of the course and you have a boat on your windward hip and you're like, oh, I'm not quite sure if I can tack, and, you know, if the pack on the left is crossing me or if I'm crossing them. And, but then you start getting headed and the boat on your hip tacks onto starboard. It's a really good opportunity for you to tack to windward of them and use them as a blocker as you come across um, the course. And basically a blocker is someone who protects your lane for you. Um, in this scenario, the blue boat is the blocker for the red boat because they're going to make any port tack boat either tack or duck them. And so this red boat's in a really powerful position. They have a great lane or pretty good lane to get across the course. No one is a threat to come and take it unless they can fully cross blue. Really pow big power move on the race course to be able to execute this. Um, Another way to execute it, if you don't have someone on your hip who's tacking off, you can also kind of um, make your own blocker by, let's say you have um, a port starboard scenario where um, you could actually just far, far out, just put the bow down a little bit. So as you get to them, they have to tack and then you put the bow back up um, and you create a little bit of a lane for yourself. Um, obviously you don't want to lose a ton of distance sailing across the course by doing it, but you just crack off like, one or two degrees, force them to tack earlier so that when they tack, you have, um, you can come up and have a nice little lane to lure it of you. But I think this, this blocker move is a total power move and um, going back to the 80% rule that Maggie was talking about, if you can come across in that green, that best lane that's like 80% of the way up on the right hand side of the course with a blocker, you're in a really, really powerful spot. And Steph, what's the distance between, like the lateral distance you need so that they're not affecting your air usually? I mean, I would say like minimum, probably one boat length. Yeah, I think that'd be Maybe tight. more. Anything that like makes you feel comfortable. And I think it, it varies boat to boat in like your fore aft position. If you're a little able to be a little bit more bow forward, you don't need that lateral separation to be as much. But if you're bow back, you need that lateral separation to be a little bit more.